Alright, I wanted to talk a little bit here in this video about uh, tracer tests that are used for reactors. So, tracer tests for reactors. And so, the basic idea is, you know, this is really important, we're looking at water treatment. Let's say we have a reactor and we have some flow coming in and out of there and you know presumably if you've got a reactor you're trying to achieve some goal where you have an input stream and you want it to to be different over here one of the things that's going to affect that a lot is the way that the that water flows through a reactor and so you know one of the most common types of reactors that we that we might use in, in theory is called a continuously stirred tank reactor so a CSTR continuous stirred tank reactor and if it's continuously stirred that allows us basically to make some assumptions about the flow in here that we can use to come up with models that are useful so uh, one of the things that we would really want to know in looking at any any tank though is how the water is going to flow through that tank so um, What's often done is, you know, a tracer. So, use to see how water flows in a tank. And so, I wanted to talk a little bit in this video about how we can analyze a, a tracer for a continuously stirred tank. So let's say that we, so the way that you would normally do this is if you're trying to study how water flows through the tank, there's no way that we can just look at the water molecules and know what they're doing. So in a tracer, we can put something here in the influent and measure it over here at the other side. And if the substance is easy to measure and that if it's conservative, meaning it won't react inside the reactor, something like salt or maybe a dye that, that doesn't it's not biodegradable. We could measure it over here. We can then use that to figure out the characteristics of the reactor. So that's a tracer test. And so we typically might use a uh, what we call a step input input to reactor. And what that means is we're going to suddenly so we're going to have the concentration here is going to be versus time here at t equals zero. We're going to suddenly step it up, step up the concentration here. So it's zero, zero, zero. Then we suddenly spike it up to C zero and we hold it here. And this will be our influent. And then we go over here and measure what's coming out. Influent. Measure what's coming out in the effluent. And it's going to have some concentration versus time. And over here we're going to have some inflow concentration C0 and it's going to be something else. And then we have a Q that's flowing in and out. And the reactor has some volume V. And so <clears throat> based on how this effluent looks like compared with the influent, we can then um, make some analysis of what's going on. So so let's let's look at analyzing this problem for the CSTR case. So CSTR to do this we're going to do a mass balance. And so the idea is that our accumulation is going to be the in minus the out plus or minus the reaction for any reactor. Here, there's no uh, reaction going on. And so our accumulation, this is going to be the rate of change of mass, which is going to be the volume times the rate of change of concentration, because the concentration in here is changing. The inflow is going to be a Q times a C0. So this is what's coming in after we've made this step here at T equals 0. And then what's going out is going to be Q times C. So because it's a well-mixed reactor, the concentration here leaving the reactor is the same as the concentration everywhere else. It's only one number. If the concentration was a variable throughout here, this is a lot more complicated problem. But 
anyway because it's the same everywhere the concentration in the whole reactor is the same as the outflow and so this is a differential equation to solve that we need an initial condition and in this situation because it was zero over here before um, there'll be no mass in the reactor at the beginning and so this is really basically the same equation I did in a different video and I'm going to solve this here uh, using Laplace transforms I'm going to make a quick uh, rewrite so I'm going to define tall as V over Q so the volume divided by the flow rate of the reactor if I do that I can rewrite this whole thing as DC by DT plus tau times C Actually, it's 1 over tau isn't it Q over V uh, is equal to C0 and so this will be Q over V also so it'll be C0 over tau okay <clears throat> and so this is this is really similar to a video I did a minute ago with Laplace transforms you might want to go watch that video I'm going to do it a little quicker here and so I'm going to use the Laplace transform here of this thing when I do that here I'm going to get C bar times S plus 1 over tau times C bar is equal to C0 over tau times 1 over S so this is 1 over S when I transform it this just just becomes C bar and then this is S times C0 and then minus so I'm supposed to minus the initial condition but here our initial condition is 0 so it's a little easier so I can then uh, solve for C bar here I can collect terms and move it over and so I get let's see if I multiply both sides by tau now let me just make sure I do it right so C bar times S tall plus 1 is equal to C 0 over S so therefore C bar is C 0 over S times S tall plus 1 uh, I can do a partial fraction decomposition then to break this apart so that I can invert it. So A over S plus B over S tall plus 1 needs to give me C0. Cross multiply. And if I collect the S terms together, I get what A tall plus B times S. Let's see, plus A has to equal to C0. So therefore, A equals C0, and then B is going to have to be equal to. A negative a times tau so negative tau times c0 so I can then rewrite this whole guy as c bar is equal to Let's see, C0 over S plus B, which is a negative tau times C0 over S tau plus 1. And now I just need to do the inverse transform. So this one is a 1 over S, so that's just going to be a C0. Uh, the right term, if I actually divide the top and bottom, Let's just go ahead and do that. C0 over S plus 1 over tau. If I rewrite it this way, this is a little easier to recognize the solution. So, so this one in my table of Laplace transforms here just becomes a 1. And then my other term is a 1 over S minus A. 
So my a here is going to be negative 1 over tau. So therefore, when I do Laplace inverse here, I get c of t is equal to, this just becomes c0, and then minus, and then the c0 there, and this term becomes e to the minus t over tau. Or I can factor that out. So the whole thing looked like a mess, but that's how I can solve this tracer and a step input for a well-mixed tank problem. Um, so, so this gives me what the concentration is going to look like. A term that is often used in analyzing tracer data is the exit age distribution. And so for a, you know, this is basically going to just describes how how the water flows in a way that is independent of any kind of uh, influent conditions. So whatever kind of influent we get, we should get come up with this function called e of t that we can use to describe that. And then f of t is the integral of e of t okay across some time and so we can actually once you've got the for a step input so for a step input f of t is easy to calculate it's just c of t over c0 uh, and then we can calculate e of t by taking the derivative of that so f of t in this situation is just going to be 1 minus e to the minus t over tall. So this is a kind of dimensionless way to think about how water flows through the reactor. And then E of t is the derivative of that. So because f is the the integral of how the you know residence time distribution here. So this is like a, a probability distribution. distribution function for water. So some of the water that comes in is going to leave really quickly, some of it's going to take longer, there's going to be some distribution, and E of t is going to tell us that, and if we integrate that over time, we get the cumulative distribution function. So for a tracer test, so these are the things we would really like to be able to get out of this reactor, uh, reactor to be able to describe how water flows through it. For a, a tracer, a step input tracer, we can easily calculate f of t by just dividing. And then to get the e of t value, we just take the derivative of that. And so the derivative of this with respect to time is going to be a negative 1 over tau times all this. That term goes away. So 1 over tau, e to the minus t over tau. So this is the functions for the concentration in the effluent. If we have a step input, this is the <clears throat> cumulative uh, distribution function for how long a water molecule is going to stay inside the reactor. And then this is the probability distribution function for that. Um, we can then use this e of t function to predict what would happen if water flows through with some other kind of a, a function later which we will look at but so i wanted to go through and talk about how you could use laplace transforms to analyze this problem and then come up with the e of t function and now from here we will uh, build to look at a problem where we have more than one uh, csdr in series